Good morning, everyone, and uh, welcome to the third and final webinar in our half-term well-being series with Paralympic gold medal winning swimmer and our British Paralympic Association ambassador since 2015, Ollie Hind. For those who missed it, we had a great conversation on Monday talking about fitness, where Ollie demonstrated some great exercises you can do at home to complement your main exercise routine. Yesterday, Ollie and I hit the kitchen to make overnight oats and talk about what good nutrition looks like for himself and practical tips for all of us. I hope uh, that those that joined uh, will be joining us uh, enjoying their breakfast today. Uh, for those of you that uh, missed the sessions uh, this week or one of the sessions, uh, don't worry. Um, we're going to make the recordings available to you um, after the end of the series. Next uh, slide, please. Um, so yeah, delighted that Ollie is with us uh, once again today. Uh, so today we're going to be talking about uh, resilience. Um, as with the last uh, couple of days, it's a great opportunity for, for you to uh, put your questions to Ollie. Um, whether you want to know how he stays mentally strong and fit, um, career highs and lows, uh, Ollie's approach to resilience, um, whatever you'd like to know, um, it's really easy to get involved. Just use the Q&A button at the bottom of the screen. Um, Ollie, and I, Ollie and I can see the questions as they're coming on through. Um, and we'll get through as many of them, if not all of them, uh, today. Uh, today I'll be uh, leading some mindfulness practice with Ollie, um, so we'll both participate. And everyone at home, please do uh, get involved, um, and uh, we'll kick off uh, today's session. Enjoy. So uh, good morning again, Ollie. Um, yeah. Last few days seems to have gone uh, really quick. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. It's. Uh... We, we always say, don't we, on, on each of the sessions that the, the time's gone really quick. And yeah, I can't believe that we're, we're on the third and, and final session. But yeah, I'm looking forward to this one. Yeah, no, brilliant. Yeah, I mean, you know, we've obviously spoken before this week as well. And um, it's been probably the most unusual year I've ever experienced. And I, I don't know about you. Um, yeah, what, what has this been this year from start to finish uh, been like for you? Um, and, and kind of how have you adapted personally and professionally to everything going on? Yeah, I mean, it's it's been a bit of a, a roller coaster, hasn't it? I think for everybody, whether you're kind of in, involved in sport or not, I think it's it's been a very very strange one, a very difficult one as well. Um, obviously, beginning of the year, um, I was kind of in in full training, obviously, and, and and getting ready for for what I was hoping to be be a big year, running into Tokyo. Um, training was going really good and, and feeling great, and then obviously. Um, it was, there was a different path that, that we all had to go down and you know COVID hit and obviously my for me um not not being able to go to to Tokyo 2020 and and having to change things up so it's been it's been a strange one um but you know hopefully we, we'll all come out of this stronger and um we'll, we'll have learned something I think and be able to take that that forward I think that's really important and um what what have you learned about yourself um, throughout all of this, um, obviously a challenging time. Um, what were the kind of key things that you've personally take away? And I guess from that, what sort of advice would you give me or, or anyone else in, in your position or our position? Yeah, definitely. I, th I think I've found that adaptability is a very, very important skill. Um, obviously, I've been forced to do that with with my training and kind of think outside of the box and. Um, Obviously, I can't, couldn't get in the pool. I don't have one on the back garden, so I, I couldn't swim. Um, couldn't swim in the bath, although I tried. Um, so I, I had to change my my training, and obviously that's that's something that that I had to adapt. Um, but also, I think not not putting pressure on too much pressure on myself, and kind of trying to enjoy the journey and enjoy things that that are coming up, and and taking the joy out of those little things. Um, you know, obviously lockdown was really really difficult for for a lot of people but kind of thinking back and reflecting there was there was a lot of times um you know that I'd, I'd spent and things that I'd done you know they're they're great memories for me so um yeah just taking positives out out of every situation or at least trying to to do that I think is really important yeah no, brilliant and um you know one of the things that again we've spoken about uh, before um, and we're going to be doing today actually, is, you know, actual training for resilience um, emotional and mental resilience as well um, the last couple of days we've talked really openly and you know interestingly about nutrition and fitness and I think both of us would agree that's quite a thing that everyone knows a little bit more um, but resilience training and mental training is not necessarily something even though it's with us all the time that we focus on um, 
what is your routine um, within competition, out of competition? You know, what support do you have? Like, what sort of resilience training do you personally do? Yeah, I mean, I've I've done quite quite a lot in in the past, and I think, you know, similar to to the physical training, you know, it, it takes time and effort to to build that up and um, to get that bank and wealth of experience. So going into the Rio Games uh, 2016. Um, one of the SNC coaches that I was working with at the time um, also worked in sports psychology. So he, he that worked really well for me because he he was there um, first and foremost as my SNC coach for strength and conditioning. Um, so he was he was in the training sessions. He could see me kind of on a day to day, week to week basis. Um, and then also we were doing mindset stuff on the side. Um, so we could kind of like marry the two two together um, and that worked really well. Um, some of the techniques that, that he helped me with um, really did um, come to play in Rio and, you know, he, he created kind of these videos that I had um, to access in Rio that, that just kind of reminded me of the, the work that I've done because I think that for me going into Rio, obviously I was feeling a lot more pressure um, than I had done four years previously in London because in London I was I was only 17 I was kind of the new kid around and um, on Rio I got the target on my back so just having those those videos and just that constant reminder that I'd, I'd done the work for it and you know I was as best prepared as I possibly could um, was really really important um, so I've taken those skills and now I do work with the the psychologist at British Women still. Um, we've throughout lockdown we've we've had kind of regular um, video catch ups and and things. Just for me, just using it as a bit of a soundboard and someone to talk to. And you know, if I've got any worries or concerns, I can I can kind of bring that up. Or um, yeah, so for me going forward, I've gotten I've gotten that experience of what I need in my sport to to mentally prepare myself. And you know, it's just about feeling good and and getting ready. And um, what sort of um, tools do you have that you can use? So you've mentioned obviously it's like you know, a coach that talks you through in video calls. Um, but what about like when you're on your own in your own time? Do you have any tools that you use? Because um, for our levels, we have uh, Unmind, um, which we're going to talk about. Yeah. Um, what do you have? Do you use anything? Uh, to be honest, no, I've never used an app before, which is you know one of the reasons why I'm, I'm quite excited for today to, to give it a go. And I think that's probably something that I'm going to add into my, not just my routine for my sport, but just my routine for, for life, really. Um, I think, you know, it, mental health now is so much more talked about. And I think it's really important that we, we keep that going and, um, you know, kind of exposing you know, the tools that are available that, that can really help people. Um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm definitely going to add it into into my, my life, I think. Brilliant. Well, that thing, that leads us quite nicely on to what we're going to do today. So for those at home, we're, we're just going to flip today a little bit. So Ollie took me through <laughs> some, uh, you know, recipe yesterday and, you know, some exercises. So today we're going to actually do a role reversal. So we're going to do an exercise uh, together and I encourage everyone at home uh, to do the same. So Ollie, Basically, Unmind is is what we have at Open Levels, yeah. um, and we can access this um, anytime as well. Um, and there's a couple that I picked out today that you know I find really useful, and we're going to do basically together. Um, so I'm going to share my screen, and we're going to go through it. Just four minutes, yeah. So you get a chance now just to take a breath, and um, yeah, we'll talk about it afterwards. Can you see that? Yes. Okay. So yeah, sit back and uh, relax, and uh, we'll go through it. To begin with, direct your attention to the soles of your feet, noticing the feeling of the ground beneath them. And if you're sitting, get a sense of the chair beneath you. Notice how things are showing up for you right now. Are there thoughts around? Any emotions? How do you feel in your body? This is about checking in with yourself, not trying to fix anything in any way. It's about giving yourself a sense of space to feel what's here and be present.
And now gather your attention around your breathing, the physical sensations of breathing, noticing what it feels like to breathe, paying particular attention to the breath passing through your nose, holding your attention there, at the tip of your nose or perhaps inside your nostrils, using this sensation of the breath as an anchor to focus your awareness and bring you into the present. Finally, expand your awareness again to the rest of your body, sensing the whole body breathing noticing the rise and fall of your whole body as you breathe in and out. And as you stay aware of your body and your breath, expand your awareness even further to take in everything that surrounds you allowing your awareness to extend out as far as it can, holding everything in this wider space of your open awareness. And as we come to the end of the practice, with one final mindful breath in and out. How was that? It's good. Feeling very relaxed now. I um, I do this basically uh, once a day, and yes. I do it at different times a day depending on you know how I'm feeling. Yeah. I kind of just want to stop. <laughs> I could almost fall asleep. Yeah, 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 that's it. It kind of just brings you back to to yourself, doesn't it? I think that's that's really important. Yeah. So I I picked this particular one out um, because um, it's something, and you've mentioned it before as well. That any time of day, your emotional scale could be high or low. Yeah. You know. So there might be times where you just you know it starts getting a little bit too intense that you might just want to take a step back. Yeah. And it's one of the things, you know, when I'm training for an event or, you know, when I'm just trying to focus on something at work or time with the family, you know, it's just something that, you know, I think we talk about basically just having a bit of time for yourself, just to yeah. center yourself and then be able to then, obviously then gives you a little bit of a... <sighs> yeah, just a bit of a reset. Yeah, I think that's really important. And, you know, we'd spoken um, on Monday about, kind of the importance of taking breaks and things and, and kind of recovering not only your body but your mind. And I think obviously tools like this are really, really good for for doing that, aren't they? They're very accessible. And so it, are there other um, like different exercises on, on the app? Is it is it an app kind of like that's on just the app store that, that anybody can download? Um, so it is an app, yeah. So we, we have a, a subscription through the company itself. Um, but yeah, there's a, a few others out there that yeah. people can download. So um, yeah, you'll see, I'll actually show the information at the end and yeah. talk about it afterwards as well, because um, it's really useful and it's there to you know, just complement your day. Um, it's not something that you, you have to use all the time. It's, it's yeah. something that's there when you need it. And some people like myself use it all the time and others basically just dip in and out when they need something. Um, and it's really varied as well. Yeah. There's whole series available. So yeah. if, you, if you're in the run up to, let's say for example, you're in the run up to your competition, you, know, you might want to do a whole week's worth. So there's yeah. actually a series that you can do a little bit every day. Yes. Or you might want to do something like we've just done and just a quick, I just need a moment. Yeah. You know, it's a four minute one, there's a set, you can have different ones as well. And it kind of depends. And actually a lot of it does center around basically just breathing. Yeah. Slowly. Yeah. And also just being aware of what's around you. Mm. I can do all that as well. So um, yeah, it's it, different things for different people. Um, and actually, so one of the tools that they do have, um, and it's very relevant basically is gratitude. Okay. 
Yeah, so that's one of the tools that is really well used on Unmind. Um, so what, what are you grateful for? Who are you grateful for? And what are the things you're looking forward to most when things change for the better in the future? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think that, that's great. I, obviously, it's, I think like asking yourself those questions are, are really important, especially at times like this, because you know, it's easy to get overwhelmed and kind of angry and, and things. And um, yeah, I think it's important just to just kind of remind yourself, isn't it? What, what actually am I grateful for? Grateful for what, what great things do I have in my life? Um, that, that I'm fortunate to have and, you know, make, make my life better. Um, yeah. Do you, uh, do you think about that much? Do you, do you have people in mind or things in mind that you're grateful for? Yeah. I mean, you know, obviously my, I've got great family, great, great friends, um, that, you know, we've, we've all supported each other through, um, what's been a, a tough year. So I'm, I'm very, very grateful for, for that. I'm grateful obviously for my sport that, that I'm able to, to be back in the water and, and back training again um i've just gotten a, a new puppy as well so I'm, I'm grateful for for that he's obviously brought a lot of joy joy into into our lives um for the last week and will continue to do so yeah definitely there there are a lot of things that i'm grateful for even just even like little things um yeah i'm i'm grateful for for all the opportunities i've had i'm grateful for you know so many things yeah and um we spoke actually just before um about um kind of anxieties as we come out of you know whatever state of lockdown people are in as well um how do you manage kind of the anxieties looking forwards um or even just in the past with you know your training and your competition as well um how, how do you feel about that and what sort of advice would you give people outside of um looking in today that have got anxieties as well about coming back out again yeah, I mean, I've struggled a little bit with with kind of anxieties and not not knowing what what's going to happen and you know not having things in your control. I think that's a really big trigger for for anxiety for for me anyway. Not not being in complete control of, of things, um, and I think it's again it's an important skill to to be able to kind of just let go and say, you know, what what will be will be kind of thing. I'm going to focus on what I can do kind of right now today. Um, the next day the next day and focus on that and not really kind of projecting too far into the future I think that's that's something that, that we we all do um, you know when when we can't control things with there's a little bit of kind of uncertainty we we always kind of look to the future and, and worry about something that's not even happened um, so yeah I think it's important just to take it day by day what can I do today that's going to make make today one percent better than than the day before um i think that's kind of a, a good focus for me when when i'm feeling a bit anxious it's quite uh, appropriate with the exercise we just did about mm. the present. yeah definitely yeah because you know things that are in in the future you know we, we might not be able to control but we can control right in the present and kind of you know like exercises like that are great to just kind of bring you back to that state and say right okay it's it's about today it's about now what i'm doing now so mm. i think yeah it's great so um, we've had a really good question that's come in. Um, so the person says, while I'm sure this doesn't happen to you much, do you have any tips for coping with not winning for a sports mad kid who wants to come first all the time? Yeah, that's a great, that's <laughs> that's a great, that is a very, very good question. Something that, you know, I think every athlete has to, to battle with. I think, you know, kind of appropriate to, to what we were just talking about. Um, for me, kind of prior prior lockdown um I'd got into a, a good space where I was honestly I was just enjoying going into training every day and just just being an athlete that that I got real joy from that um so I was going into to the, my swimming sessions and my gym every single day just trying to be a little bit better than I was before and just enjoying the process I think for me if you're enjoying the process setting yourself little goals I think that's also important if you can set yourself kind of incremental goals okay you might say my my ultimate goal is to to win a paralympic gold medal there's there's no problem with with having those you know really huge goals and and wanting to to be the best but set little goals for yourself in between to get to that big goal and you're going to see that improvement i think that's that's the main thing you know you can't control what someone else is doing 
because for me, if someone on the day turns up and, and swims faster than than me, there's nothing I can do really about that. I can't control how how fast another person's going to swim. But I can control what I'm doing kind of on a day to day basis, so that that I'm the best that I can be. Um, so I think it's just that that little mindset shift um, of setting little goals. Um, just to keep improving, keep improving, because you know, as kind of human beings, that's that's kind of the the ultimate goal, really, of con- continuous improvement. So, I think it's it's just having that mindset switch, which is difficult. Um, I understand when when obviously you're you're a young kid and you want to win all the time, um, but sometimes it you know it can teach you that you know it's it's not always necessarily 100 percent about winning. It's about that journey and constantly trying to improve. And I guess, um, you know, goal setting is something that, you know, we talk about, you know, mm-hmm. all the time and, and rightly so as well. How how has your goal setting changed from when you were coming up, like through the ranks and kind of getting really into your sport? Because mm-hmm. um, again, I guess it's a little bit different now for yourself um, because you know a lot more, mm-hmm. you've got people around you to help you. Um, but what about for those kids at home who, you know, not haven't necessarily kind of had that exposure? Um, if if you think about back when you were their age, um, yeah. what what did you do back then, or what did you wish you had done maybe back then to make sure that you know resi- you were much more resilient to the journey you were about to take? What yeah, to- I think again, I I think it would be a case of setting you know actionable goals that that I can achieve on a day to day basis. I think that's really important because if say if I'd said okay. I want to win a Paralympic gold medal. That's that's my goal. Just and I also I would say about goal setting. I think it's important to write them down or you know type them on your computer or even your your phone or something so that you can see them because if you've written them down, they're kind of in the universe and you're accountable for them. So um, if you're not doing taking the steps to to achieve your goals, um, it's not just kind of a thought in your head. It's I've set out to do this and I'm either <clears throat> not doing it or I am doing it. Um, so I think I would probably like to have set smaller incremental goals that I can focus on each day and focus on improving each day. I think that's that's in sport anyway. I think that's the the real key is trying to improve day in, day out, day in, day out, day out and getting that consistency. Mm-hmm. Um, so for me, it could be um, one of my goals. So when I'm swimming, um, sometimes my right hand I don't catch the water as well um so it could be something as simple as my my goal is to um spend 15 minutes of each session really thinking about the catch on on my right hand and I think having little goals like that they all add up you know it's those one percenters so then ultimately okay it's it's fine to have a, a really big lofty goal to to be the best in the world for instance but it's those little Kind of one percent is in between that, that are going to get you to to that final destination. No, brilliant. Yeah, and you know we've talked a lot about quite a few different things actually uh, this morning, um, as we have done all week. Um, there's obviously kind of so much to it. Um, thinking now about you know next year, um, you've got uh, another big year coming up. Yeah. Um, you know, which uh, you know everyone will know. Um, what do you think the next you know, period will, will look like um, how much how much different will it be this time because of what's gone on you know so in terms of resilience and mental strength basically what what do you think you're going to do differently knowing what you know now and the fact that yeah. you shifted one year on yeah I think it is get, it is going to be different obviously you know kind of a day-to-day basis is different now anyway which which has an effect but I think again it just comes comes that down to being grateful for things and really enjoying being in the moment and kind of the journey of things because you know nothing's nothing's promised as as we've learned this year and you know no nobody would have predicted um what's happened so um for me it's just going in every day enjoying myself again trying to improve day in day out um and that's that's all I can really ask for and then you know, hopefully those one percenters add up, and then it'll, it'll pay off in the end. 
Yeah, and how are your uh, fellow athletes uh, getting along? Um, you know, with their resilience at the moment. I mean, you're all going to be in very different parts of the country and in all the different boats. Um, do you, do you guys speak much? And, and and how are they? How are they coping? Yeah, I've spoken a little bit to to some of the my friends on the team, and I think like everyone, that it's been a really difficult period, and you know, ev- everybody's world's been completely flipped, kind of upside down. So. Um, it's been a challenge, um, but I think they're just kind of getting on with with their day to day life and um, getting used to to life with with COVID around and and being able to train. Um, I think generally across the board, people people are just very grateful to to have the opportunity to to be in training again and and to be swimming. Um, but yeah, it's it's going to be very different. Um, but looking forward to the challenge. Yeah. Do you do you get to see? anyone at any point soon or are you still on your own yeah i mean so i'm i train with my my squad here in nottinghamshire so obviously i'm i'm training with with people on on a day-to-day basis but a lot of the kind of the national team guys they're dotted around the country and um yeah it doesn't look like we're going to be able to get together and, and train as as kind of the gb team anytime soon so um a lot of the things are obviously will, will be, be coming online and, and moving to to that so um yeah it's a little bit strange but you know just, just about keeping going and and keep trying to improve yeah we talk um a lot about it in a work setting or even personally as well about being adaptable yes um, and i think you've uh, with everything you've said and we've spoken about i think being adaptable is is it's an important important, but yeah definitely more in the forefront now isn't it yeah, because I think it's very easy to uh, to kind of just get comfortable with with your day to day routine and, and kind of what you're doing and and things and yeah to to be able to be, be adaptable and um, when obstacles are, are inevitably thrown up you you can um, kind of change your path and and get past them. Brilliant. Um, well, Ollie, we've come to that uh, that time again. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I hope uh, you found um, that practice and the conversation today useful. Definitely, yeah, I'm, I'm definitely going to to get an app on my phone. I think, you know, obviously technology today is is fantastic in that way that you can you can have it on your phone. So for me, when I'm traveling and, and training away and and stuff again, it's right there that you, that you can use. Yeah, no, brilliant. If we can get the next slide up, please, if that's okay. Yeah, brilliant. Um, so yeah, uh, hopefully everyone at home got involved with the practice today and, and the conversation. You all found it useful. Um, if you'd like to repeat any of these activities or investigate the other tools on our mind, uh, which we've spoken about, um, the app's been loaded onto your work mobiles and you can access all the information um, from our UK Wellbeing pages, which you can see on the screen now. Um, lots of resources available, as I mentioned, uh, Life After Lockdown series. Uh, a lot of considerations um, about the anxiety surrounding measures easing and changing. Um, so a really good series, which I've personally done uh, myself. Uh, one for all the families to listen to, uh, the firesides. So insightful chats with uh, experts on a huge range of topics, um, helping stressed teenagers, uh, self-care for carers, maybe of particular interest. Um, there's, like I mentioned to Ollie, there's, there's so many on there um, which you can use. So yeah, this is just how you can, how you can get involved. Um, so with that being said, all that's left for me to do now is um, thank you to everyone for attending today and the sessions. Um, hopefully we've got through, I'm sure we've got through all the questions. Um, Ollie, thank you to you. Um, it's been a great uh, few days. Um, it's been good fun and really insightful. Hopefully you've got something out of it just as much as myself on the audience. Um, so it's been great. Um, you know, good luck with everything that's coming up and in preparation for next year's games. Thank you. Um, yeah, like you said, you know, the end goal doesn't change. It's just how you get there. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. It's, uh, um, it's all so, about when the journey. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And um, yeah, I'm sure we'll speak again. So um, yeah, everyone, please have a great day and enjoy the rest of the week and um, stay fit, healthy and, and strong. Well, Take care. Thank yeah. you. Bye.